All right, we're going, we're going dumpy tonight. Okay, look at me, look at me. I have the energy of an ant today. An ant. I don't even know what that. I don't even know what that means. I think ants probably have a lot of energy. Actually, I think we're just going off the Zoolander pun. The, this is a center for ants. That whole thing. Hopefully, hopefully you're familiar with that. We're we're coming down from two coffees. Okay, so. So in support of my yogic, my yogic revival that happened recently, actually, I didn't tell you guys about that, really. I did in like a little practice journal thing entry that I made for uh, posterity from 10, 10 years from now, if the world still exists, but uh, I didn't do it for YouTube. But um, a yogic revival is occurring for me. And actually, it started in December, but <laughs> well, that's too long of a story. So we're not going to get into that. I already mentioned my story, how like I was a Buddhist and uh, I wanted to be a Buddhist monk. I just couldn't because of health. So the world, the universe kind of trapped me back into the worldly life. I was kind of tethered to it for a certain reason. And there's a whole reason behind that. There's a whole reason why I had to become a Grihasta Yogi. And uh, you'll see the reason soon um, in the subsequent years. But um, for real, I never wanted to do any of this worldly stuff. I would have been a monk is what I'm saying. Uh, like I might have returned to the world by now because like I would have attained Satori probably by now. So I'm, I'm revisiting it now. I've, I've, I've taken my physical projects as far as they can go. And in light of my health too, just the two things combined, I'm like, it's time to do this thing that I actually want to do. Ananda Maima. Interesting. That's the ascended master, Saint Woman. Um, from India, Ananda Maima. I heard the name as I was conveying this. But um, this is what I've always wanted to do. This is really the, actually the only thing that matters to me now that I've exhausted the karmas of um, pursuing worldly things as far as I can take them. Because those activities, they would be fun, but I'm so obstructed in accomplishing anything with them and uh, getting not much results either that... Um, my my caring for them has been exhausted. And so thankfully the karmas are extinguished and now yoga, as they say, and now yoga. Um, that's actually basically the first line of the yoga sutras of Patanjali. Remember the jam guys, the Patanjali jelly? Um, yeah, so verse number one is Atta, yoga nushasana. That means, and now the exposition of yoga is being made. Righteous. I am uh, dedicated to the the goal of of Nirvana. This is what I set out for, guys. This is I went forth from the world in 20, 2015, 2016, really twenty fourteen, whatever. It's who knows Shuke. It's called Shuke in Japanese. The um, home departure, and it's really a mental thing. Ultimately, unless you can literally go to a monastery. When have you gone forth from the world? When have you renounced everything in your life, though it may still be with you? All right, so that's what we're talking about. And now, so I've rededicated that goal. I'm going to get it. You know why? Because I have nothing left. Nothing left. And, you know, that sounds kind of dismal, but it's kind of exciting, actually. If you have nothing left to tie you down nothing left to hold you back, then that's when you can do the thing that you finally want to do without restraint. And you can do it to the max, too, because if you know that there's no time left, then you're just going to go all out, right? Right, son? Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. That's what you're going to do. Okay, so Mogadishu? <laughs> Mogadishu. All right, Mogadishu. Now, if you remember the movie Inception... No, Inception. I'm thinking of Mombasa. That's that's a scene from Inception in Mombasa. Mombasa. Uh, Mogadishu. Now this is Black Hawk Down. This is a war movie. If you if you've seen it, um, it's kind of crazy. I do recommend that. It's pretty awesome. I think it's based on a true story actually. But um, it's the what is it? Desert Storm Operation Desert Storm. Some war like that. But uh, the helicopter crashes in the middle of this crazy, insane like. There's like a town basically overtaken by some like warlord mafia thing where just everyone has a gun for some reason. Pretty sure it's Somalia. I think that's where Mombasa is too, actually. Um, but yeah, no, it's about, it's kind of like a saving Private Ryan type situation. Yeah, we won't 
<laughs> no spoilers for y'all, okay? So basically, I've been in Mogadishu. The, the whole point is there's actually a little, yeah, a little symbolism here for you guys. I've been in Mogadishu for for years. That's kind of, that's the scenario. To put it, paint a picture for you, I am the Black Hawk Down situation. That's kind of what I've been dealing with. And, uh, and now I'm trying to get out of, get out of town. Try not to get shot down by the mafia people, okay? Uh, before that, I was sticking around in town because I thought I had to. I was like, oh, well, I need to complete this work, right? This, this seems like a good way. Maybe I'll establish a shop, and then that will help lead me to some situations that help me escape from, from this city. You know, like, I'll develop connections, and someone will, maybe the, the baker will, like, be able to ship me out in some convoy, that's kind of the idea, like with the whole YouTube thing. And like, obviously I wanted to help people. I wanted to show people the path of spirituality in like a real clear, concise way and inspire people to the goal of Nirvana, just like it had been shown to me. Like that was the only thing I had in 2012, guys. That was it. That was the thing. I had nothing else. No future. And so that's what led me to becoming a monk. And so, and so yeah, now I see the way of, out of Mogadishu. And it is restoring the Buddhist monk that I was. The one that is wearing the saffron robes that you cannot see. Okay? Like, I can't give up this house. I can't give up my tasteful attire. Nor can I give up my Jesus cross from Salisbury, England. Cathedral. Salisbury Cathedral in England when I went there in July. Um, you know why? Because there's no reason to. That's not real renunciation. If you can't renounce what you have while you have it, then you probably don't stand a chance with real renunciation as a monk. <laughs> no, I mean, it's going to help you a ton to do it that way, but you know what I mean. Like as a, like a yogic aphorism type thing, it's like... <laughs> If you cannot renounce what you have while you still have it, then you are not a true disciple. Like that kind of thing. That's what I'm getting at, okay? So yeah, we're restoring the saffron robes. And this time, they're gonna stick. And there's a good reason for that. Now I have an anchor for this. Before, I was just like, I'm effed, man. Like, I don't care about anything. I've gotta like, attempt to work at these worldly things and write these books and do these videos, but it's like, when am I ever gonna, I don't see any hope for me, like in terms of things working out, like physically and all that. But now, there's some secret, we got some aces in the hole, guys, and they won't be disclosed for a while, I think. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how that unfolds. We got an ace in the hole, and by golly, we're gonna play that ace. The ace will be played. In fact, let's see what kind of ace we got in the hole today. Is it a good one? Oh yeah, dude. Let's go. You know why let's go? Because the court cards in the Crowley Both deck, they all represent zodiacal segments. The 12 of them do. The four princesses, they represent ethereal, like cardinal directions of the earth. Man, I wish I looked better right now. <laughs> I shouldn't have I shouldn't have gone dumpy on this vlog, huh? So stupid. No, this, um, this though is me. This is Scorpio. Okay, mostly. There's some semantics with that, but like, mostly this card is Scorpio. So that's kind of, that's wild, guys. I just, I was like, mm, ace in the hole. My, my cards are right there. Let's just, let's just Yu-Gi-Oh this right now and see if we get red eyes, white dragon. <laughs> Sorry. Red eyes, black dragon. Or blue eyes, white dragon. I got the white dragon, dude. Look at that. He's got blue eyes, maybe. He's got me. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's blue in there. Double D. Double die. Okay. And that was actually really cool. I got my ace in the hole, baby. We go in the distance this time. We go in the distance. Okay, Izanami. Izanami, now that is the, the jutsu in Naruto. Okay, it's one of the Sharingan powers. Now, Izanami traps somebody in a mental loop dream sequence basically until they change their mind about the thing 
or learn the lesson. So this world, this existence we are in, this is basically everyone has their own personal izanami. So we're all going through these dreams, these dreams that we call life. And it is Groundhog Day, like the movie, until we exit the cycle of samsara, until we choose the path of purification to waking up to the true self. Then we can exit the genjutsu, the izanami. We reclaim our true glory and freedom. Yeah, baby. All right. I think that's it. Metatron will live. <laughs> I just, I don't know why that came out. Metatron will live. <laughs> where's my, where's my biscuit? Metatron will live. I don't know. <laughs> Enjoy this, I guess, guys. Enjoy my weird... Those are all psychic impressions, by the way. Those things I'm hearing that are coming to mind. Think about that. All right. Now, see you guys next time. Hit like, hit subscribe. Get yourself a Sage Against the Machine t-shirt so you can join my spiritual band. All right. And I'm going to have magical sigils for sale on my Shopify for sure. Once I figure out the tax code, okay, it should be up when this vlog goes up. So check those out. They're thoroughly explained on the website. But uh, I think you're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. All right, peace. Okay, I hear that FLCL song again. It's not by the band that does the soundtrack, um, who is The Pillows. The Pillows, right? They go, It's like kind of Japanglish. But um, 